Hello and welcome to another part of this jumping series of tutorials on open computers um, with these wonderful two persons, uh, the cameraman that doesn't film and the uh, other guy that doesn't say anything. So uh, today we will be talking a bit about the uh, 3D printers which are new in open computers. So there was a short video already, but that was basically just a preview. So now there's the final version and there are some additional features that I will talk about. So the first thing is you will need to place the printer somewhere adjacent to a computer. So just like any other component that you want to use. And once it's connected, you can check if it's connected. By looking in the list of components and seeing, yes, there is the printer 3D component. So if you look at the functions of the printer, you see there's quite a lot. And you can use that to manually program the printer, basically. But that's a bit, well, painful. So the better alternative is to use the um, program made for this, the uh, printer program and you can get that by installing it from uh, OPPM. So if you have never used OPPM before, this is how you install it. So basically you run it uh, like uh, you need an internet card, exactly. Always forget about this one. Uh, install it like uh, OpenSS basically, so get a writable uh, file system. No, I do not want to reboot. And install it on the disk. And once that is installed, you can download and install the printer program. Um, whoops, let's take out the disk again. And the per package you want to install for this is um, probably the examples package. So I think this one. Uh, install, yes. Because of that, oh god, god. And yes, I noticed. Uh, that contains a few example models, so files describing blocks that can be printed and that you can use to print these blocks. Um, so in general, the blocks you will print with the printer are single blocks, so this is not for huge structures, this is for more detailed blocks that fit into one block space, essentially. If you have a Forge Multipart installed, the blocks will also be compatible with that. So you can essentially print covers if you want, and you can print multiple blocks. Uh, you can fit multiple models into a single block space if they do not collide. So once you have installed this, uh, you can have a look into uh, this directory, and you will see there are a few files in here with a 3DM extension. And that's just an arbitrary ex extension I picked, and this is basically a list of the model files that come with this package. So if we look into, let's do it this way, into one of these, uh, let's pick something simple, like this one. You'll see the format of these is basically a Lua table, and there's a few entries, and the most important one is the shapes entry, which is a list of lists and each entry contains the coordinates that define the minimum and maximum bound of the block or part of the block and the texture to use for this part. So each model can consist of up to 24 uh, shapes per default. So you can have 24 entries in this list. Well, technically you have more, but we'll come to that later. And these then define the overall look of the block. So every part of the block is a small axis aligned bounding box. And this is the extents of the bounding box and the texture of the bounding box. So if we go ahead and try to print this now, uh, we get a little output. It tells us that it sent the data to the printer and is ready to print. So if we look at the printer now, we'll see there's a preview of the block it is trying to print. But it's not doing much now. So if we open the GUI, we'll see there's two input slots to the left and one output slot to the right. 
The two input slots are for the two material types used by the printer. The one is uh, chameleon, which is the raw material for the blocks itself. The amount of chameleon used for a single print depends on the volume of the printed block. And the other is ink or color, which is um, used based on the surface area of the printed block. You can fill uh, the ink area with normal dyes, but it's much more efficient to craft a ink cartridge. So you only have to craft this once. And then you can fill that up with just a few dyes and you get uh, much more out of it than by just putting normal dye into the printer itself. But if you have a lot of dyes, you can do that too. So if we put that in, we see it's now half full, so it can take two full cartridges of ink. And in the top slot, we will put in some of the chameleon. And we'll see it starts printing. And we have our printed block. So this also has the label block of diamond now, because that's what was defined in the model file. You can define custom labels and custom tooltips for the blocks you print. And if we take this out, and then we can print it somewhere in the world. And you'll see it looks pretty much like it should. Now if you print too many blocks or blocks you don't need anymore, what you can do is you can put these prints, put these prints back into the uh, material slot and you'll get back a bit of the matter that was used to print the block. Not everything, but a good bit of it. Um, another thing you can do with chameleon is you can craft blocks of chameleon which is just the usual recipe for blocks. And these are basically just decorative blocks. You can put them anywhere you want. And you can also uh, dye them using any kind of uh, dye. So these are mostly for decorative purposes. Um, but not only. So the other use they have is we have a new tool, the texture picker. And if you remember in the model file of the model that we just printed, there was the texture for the shape, which was called diamond block. Um, if you want to print shapes that have clean textures, so nothing predefined, you can use the chameleon block because the surface area is just a plain white base that is then tinted based on the actual color of the block. So you can use the texture picker on any block in the world by right clicking it. And then you'll see in chat uh, what the name of that texture is. And that's the name you can use in the model files to use the texture on the shapes that you print. So that's the basics for simple shapes. Um, this was, well, this was a very simple shape. Let's print something a little more complex and then have a look at the model of that. So let's print a desert well. And this is where you see that you can have very detailed small blocks in the block space. What you'll also notice uh, when I hover um, the block with my um, aiming cursor, you see that the bounding boxes are actually fit to the um, box block, um, blocks that define the shape. So you can essentially also print stairs and whatnot, and you can walk over them as if they were stairs. So that works as well. Um, if we look at this uh, model now, you'll see it's a bit more complex, but it's essentially the same concept. So you have your list of shapes and your list of coordinates with the different textures, and that's it for simple shapes. Now that's not everything you can do with the printer though. You can also print buttons, for example by defining a field that this shape should emit a redstone signal when it is in an alternate state. So each block can have two states. The normal state, which is what we had until now, so the normal layout here, and an active state, which is configured by defining single shapes with the state equals true flag set. So this model here has two states. And the first is defined by these few uh, shapes, and the second is defined by these shapes. And if the emit redstone flag is set to true, then these blocks will emit a redstone signal while they're in their active state. Um, 
This also has the button mode flag set, so this means it will automatically return to its first state after, few, after time. If it's not set, then you basically have a lever which remains in the active state. So if we print that, and wait a bit, then we can use this to activate lamps, for example. So if I get a redstone lamp, put that somewhere and then put down the button. And when activated, you'll see the lamp lights up and then it reverts back to its normal state and the lamp goes off again. Um, what this um, print also allows me to demonstrate is that depending on which way you face, the block will also be rotated correctly. So you can print a simple shape and then rotate it in different orientations. And what I can also show is that if I place another one in this block, they both fit in. So these are now basically forge multipart blocks. And they both both fit in the same block space and they both still behave the same way. So you can activate them and all that. And there's a heart. That's nice. Um, right. So that's the thing for buttons. You can also print, of course, um, um, blocks with two states that do not emit a redstone signal. So an example for that is the uh, trapdoor model. Oops. So if I print this, I can place it in the world and it looks lo just like a normal trapdoor. And I can toggle it. And that's about it. But it will not emit a redstone signal, of course. Right, so, well, you also see that uh, if the block texture is transparent, um, it will work as well. Uh, one new thing in the next version of Open Computers, for which I don't think I have a model right now. Oh, by the way, uh, before I forget, in the models directory, directory uh, one model, uh, do I still have it there? is called example.3dm. This is the model that basically explains to you all the possible flags in a block model and how to use it. So that's pretty uh, much text. That's why I didn't use it for now. But if you open it, you see there's a lot of comments in there explaining what each single state um, can do, what it can be used for, how you set it, um, and what you use the flags for. Right. Um, right, and the texture picker, uh, as mentioned before, so you use the value it uh, gives you in this texture field here. So that's where you put the texture name. All right, what you can also do is you can provide a, a tint. So this is basically uh, what you can use with the chameleon texture. So this is the texture that it will dye the shape in. So if you have a chameleon texture and it would be plain white, if you define a hex code here, so this is the default uh, red, green, blue thing that you will also encounter, for example, in uh, web development or st stuff like that. So 0x uh, FF0000 would be red, for example. And then you can define the die in here. All right. Uh, so back to what I was saying in the next version, there will be also the possibility to have um, blocks that emit light. So let's see. I don't think the print uh, program is updated yet, so I'll just mention it here. Um, what you can do then is you define next to the redstone level, basically, you define also the light level of the block. And that will be the amount of light it emits um, when you place it in the world. By default, um, this light level will only go up to around 7 or 8, I believe, which is the brightness of a redstone flag. You can, however, take a print and craft it together with whoops, uh, with a bit of redstone, uh, glowstone, of course, glowstone to increase the light level by one. So if you have a block and you want to make it emit a uh, maximum light level, you can also print it with the base light level and then craft it up with a bit of glowstone to get the full maximum light level. And the other thing that prints can be crafted with are the types of block that can be used uh, as beacon base. So if you place a beacon, you need a base for it, right? And what you can do is you can print a 3D print with a block of anything, and then you get a 3D print which also works at the beacon base. So you can essentially print fancy bases for your beacons that look more like actual pyramids, for example. Um, that's pretty much it, I think.
Uh, let's check, did I forget anything? Nope, that looks good. Right, so that's basically how you use the printer, how you print prints, and yeah, all the things you pretty much need to know. Any questions? Did I forget something? Anything obvious I maybe forgot? You won't say anything. Okay. <laughs> Good. Then let's get to the second and much shorter part of this video, which will be about another new feature in the next version, which will be 1.5.7, which I think I did not mention yet. And that's the manual. So Open Computers will now be getting an in-game manual. It joins the book club, basically. And you can use this just by right-clicking, so it will open up the GUI for the manual. And this behaves pretty much like a wiki, so you can scroll through it. Uh, mouse wheel also works. And the links will be in green, so if you click a link, you follow it. And if you right-click or press the jump key, you go one back. And if you close it via escape or via the inventory key, it will restore the previous location you were in the manual. If you want to go back to the very first uh, start page, you can shift right click to open that. And finally, you can shift right click on open computers or compatible blocks, and it will open the manual page for that block. So uh, I'm told that Computronics, for example, will also get integration with the manual in the next version. So we'll also be able to open the GUI or the manual for any blocks from, from Computronics, for example. Yeah, and that's, I think, the basics for the manual, and you can look up pretty much anything in here, so we'll try to get this uh, as informat informative and filled as possible, and if you think anything's missing or anything is wrong, then please let us know, and we'll try to fix it. So this should be, from now on, the pretty much number one place to look up information on the mod. Right. And, oh right, and you also will receive one manual at the start when you start a new game, like with many other mods. And another thing, from now on, the recipes for, oh crap, uh, the recipes for the Lua BIOS and the OpenOS floppy disk will not use a normal book anymore, but a manual instead, which seems a bit more realistic. So these uh, two recipes changed. If you have any auto-crafting for these, for whatever reason, I don't really see why you would, but if you have, then you will need to adjust those. And that's it with the manuals, and we have many models around, and yep. So we hope you have fun printing 3D models and creating 3D models. Um, we'd be happy to see what you create and what you do with it. So. Please share if you do create something. What the fuck was this? Uh, <laughs> right. So, that's it for me. If you two have nothing to say, then I think that wraps us up. So, thanks for watching, and see you next time.